So every morning here, we sing a song written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, entitled Prabhati Gita. It was one of the favorite songs of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srila Dev Goswami Maharaj sang this song every morning in his mouth as well during the Mongol Artik, along with two other songs, one of which is the Guru Vastakam, which we also sing here every morning during the Mongol Artik, Vishman of Chakravitakur's Guru Vastakam. So I wanted to speak about this song and uh, its significance. You should be acquainted with this song as if you're affiliated with Audarja. It's a song that consists mostly of the of names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the names of the Lord, of course, related with his devotees. There are different types of names of God, some of which are principal and some of which are secondary names of God. Secondary names of God are those that refer to things like the Lord's acts of creation and things that have that are not directly related to his own personal life. And the principal names are those that are describing the Lord in terms of his interactions with his devotees in his personal lila. This is our ambition, of course, to enter there. And we should do service here on this plane to the Lord in relation to that in the form of preaching and everything related to preaching. Just like in the war time, not everybody's pulling the trigger on the front lines, but some are cooking and some are digging the trenches and so forth. So we should view the mission of Bhakti Siddhanta Sosti Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and their successors like our Guru Maharajas to be a, a manifestation of the Lord's outreach from Goloker Premodhan Harinam Sankirtan to this world to bring others back. This is the Parupakar, the highest type of welfare work. And if we can become absorbed in that, then there's good scope for us for entering into the personal life of the Lord as well and rendering service in that plane, which is more dear even than service rendered here. So when we speak of preaching and we're speaking of Nam Sankirtan and all the dynamic expressions of that envisioned by the real followers of, of Rupa Goswami, Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Muchite. Rupa Goswami has given this verse, and Yukta Vairagya was taken to its fullest application in the mission of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, following the vision of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. It means practical utilization of the modern world in the service of Krishna Sankirtan. Printing press was an example, which Saraswati Thakur called the Brihat Murdanga, the big drum. So, here a song made principally of names of the Lord, but we should know that inside of the name of the Lord are the qualities of the Lord, the, the rupa, the form of the Lord, the qualities of the Lord, and the leelas of the Lord. I once met a Sahajiya in uh, West Bengal, spoke with him, and um, we had a discussion, Sahajiya Guru, and he admitted, finally, yes, by Kirtan, one can be fully delivered and enter into the Leela and successful on the Rag Marg. But then he said, but Leela Kirtan, not Nam Kirtan. But Nam Kirtan is true, the further outreach and Leela Kirtan should be reserved for those who are more developed. But at the same time, all of the Leela is contained within the Lord's Name. So as we go through these different names of the Lord here in this song of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, then certainly we will be moved to reflect on the Leelas and relation to these names and the great devotees involved. Kali Kukur Kardana Yadi Chao He Here, Kali Yuga, the time in which we live, has been compared to a Kukur Kardana, to a mad dog. Very dangerous, the mad dog bites you. We were speaking the other night about Duryodhana and how he exemplifies the he's the epitome of uh, Guru Druha in language of Bhaktivinoda Kali Chela. In fact, 
Guru Druhu means who's just a burden to the Guru, who's a disciple in name only. And Kalichela means disciple of Kali Yuga. Bhaktivinoda Thakur used this term. He's wearing Kunti Mala, the neck bead, and Tilak, and Sika, and all, but really he's only Kalichela, disciple of Kali Yuga. So Duryodhan is said to be a partial incarnation of Kali. They said like that about him. So those things we discussed, some of you were there, about Duryodhan and his attitude and so forth, that should be much avoided. We don't want to be bit by that and just become a Kali Chela in the name of serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kali Kukura Kalana. So if you want, Yadi, Yadi, if Chauhe, if you want, if you have a desire, Yadi Chau, to avoid or be free from the mad dog of Kali, of Kali Yuga, of this age. It means all the hypocrisy that the age is characterized by, falsity and so forth, which reflects upon the nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. It is uh, dharmic to the extreme. You've seen the manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Sadbuj, Gaur, and Ram, and Krishna. So Mahaprabhu has the morality of Ram, outward adherence to Dharma that Ram did. But he's uh, worshipping Krishna in the mood of Braj, in the mood of the gopis. So these two things had to be put together, of course. And that way we can understand that the Leela of Radha and Krishna, while appearing to be adharmic, is actually a, a super expression of the Dharma. Prema Dharma. And so Mahaprabhu was very morally stout and righteous, a paka and perfect sannyasi. No one could be a better sannyasi than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the Lord decides to exhibit his opulence of bairagya, detachment, and all that goes with that, and who can compare with that? He, he frightened even all his renunciate disciples by his standards. So that purity and honesty and integrity, all this is the antithesis of Kali Kukur, the hypocritical mad dog of Kali Yuga. So we want to be free from that, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. If you want to avoid this mad dog of Kali Yuga, then Kali Yuga Pavana, Kali Vayanashana, Sri Satinandana Dahohe. Then that person who was Kali Yuga Pavana, he was the deliverer of people of Kali, Kali Yuga Bhavana, Kali Bhaya Nashana, who removes, Nashana removes all the bhayam, all the fear that Kali can impose. That person we should take shelter of. Sri Sachi Nandan Kauhe. So he says, then sing the holy name of the son of Sachi. Gadadhar Madana. Now who is that son of Sachi? Let us hear something more about him. Sachi Nandan Gorhari. Karadharu Madana, Nitaya Pranadan, Advita Prabhujitta Gaura. So he is the Madana, the Cupid of Gadadhar. Gaura and Gadadhar, the very esoteric tattva of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It is considered that the course to take to enter into the Madhurjaras of Brajalila is in, term, in relation to Gaurlila, which is the only course to take, within the context of taking that route, one has to pass through Goran Gadadhar and understand something about this relationship, this between Goran and Gadadhar. This was the worshipable deity of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Goran Gadadhar. So Gadadhar is that is Radha her self appearing along with her Lord Gor. Or is Krishna, and Gadadhar is Radha. But Krishna has stolen the bhava, the mood of Radha in Gorlila. Sometimes it is mentioned, it is mentioned in Gauragana Deshtipika that Gadadhar is also Lalita and Chaitanya Charitamrita. He's described as uh, similar to Rukmini. So the idea is that when the bhava of Radha is stolen, then Radha is still there, but exhibits the uh, symptoms like that of, of Lalita, Lalita Saki, or 
in the case of Chaitanya Charitamrita Rukmini Devi, because her bhava has been stolen, and always chasing after Mahaprabhu, Krishna, to get it back. We've learned that remuneration, by our practical experience, is relative to necessity. Water in a desert is very valuable, otherwise it may not be. So an insignificant thing like water in the times of great thirst, its value increases. So we, we seek the attention of God, of Krishna, the divine connoisseur of love, very hard to get his attention. So the Gaudiya Vaishnava teaching, this is the course to take by acknowledging the position of, of Radha, what is her position in relation to Krishna, then we'll get Krishna's attention very easily. Like I mentioned the other night, this Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare Hare. This is, can be construed as the Gaudiya Vaishnavas have to be indicative of Krishna, Radha, and Ram, Rama is Krishna, Ramana. Hara is the uh, Hare is the vocative form of Hara. It's also the vocative form of Hari. So it may be an appeal to Lord Hari, or it can be seen as, in a special sense, as the Gaudiyas see it, an appeal to Radha. But the name Hari, Hare, taken to be indicative of a Radha, is more charming and more attractive, has more potential, if we sing it, to draw the attention of Krishna, even in the name of Radha, because... It's Radha's name in a concealed way, for one thing, and that always has charm. But furthermore, it depicts her in terms of her power to steal away the mind of Krishna. So if we chant that Hare Krishna mantra long enough, loud enough, sincerely enough, purely enough, then Krishna will want to put his hand over our mouth, cover it. Such a thing should be told. And that means he take us back to Golok. He silences us. Great devotees are going back to God and Krishna is stopping them from chanting because <laughs> what they're telling the world is too, is too confidential. It causes him to blush. So, Radha and Krishna have come as Gaur and Gadadhar in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. So, Madana means Cupid. So, Gaur, Krishna, is the Cupid of Gadadhar. They said that Gadadha always stuck very close to the side of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Since his return from Bengal, East Bengal, when he was initiated by Ishwar Puri and began to go mad with extraordinary symptoms of love of God, one day, in his madness, crying out for Krishna, Gadadha pacified him, tried to pacify him, by telling him, that, Don't be so upset. Krishna is not far away. He's in your heart. And what did Mahaprabhu do? He began to tear apart his, his chest. And Gadada had to protect him. And Sachimata came at that time and saw this. And so she asked Gadada, you always stay with him, keep his company, and protect him from himself, from his madness. And sometimes they would sleep even side by side, Gaur and Gadada. Sridhar Maharaj has described the necessity of Gadada to be very great, so if remuneration is relative to necessity, then if we invest our energy in the service of Gadadhar to unite him with Gore, then we can draw the greatest remuneration because what is his necessity, Gadadhar's necessity, is to get back his, his bhava that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, has stolen. Therefore, in that sense, Sridhar Maharaj has described him as pitiable, empty, negative to the extreme, but we have to understand this kind of language, which on the surface may sound derogatory. But negative attracts the positive. So the negative mood of Gadadhar, if we can enter into that longing, that mood of necessity, can easily attract Krishna. So Gaur is the madana of Gadadhar. Gadadhar madana nita er pranadana. And he is the life of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is Balaram himself. Balaram is a fast friend and protector of Krishna. Every morning, entering into the cowherding leela, Mother Jasoda repeatedly 
again and again insists that Balaram, you stay by his side and always protect him. So he's Daoji, older brother. Once I was asked that if Nityananda Prabhu is the, really the brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Krishna and Balaram, why he was born in a different family was the answer. Krishna yeah. and Balaram were also a different family. <laughs> Balaram is a Rohini Nandana, son of Rohini, Krishna, son of Devaki, and both sons of Jashoda. They're both sons of Nanda and Jashoda. By the force of affection, this is to be determined. When Devaki met with Krishna and Ram at Kurukshetra, and Nanda and Yashoda came, and she saw the nature, the, the extent of Yashoda's love for Krishna and Krishna's love for, for her, then she had to admit at that point that you're the real mother, actually. So Malaram is the real brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they used to... He spent much time after Mahaprabhu began to manifest himself in terms of his Leela of Sankirtan, Leela of being a devotee, he spent much time with him in the house of Sachi and Malati. The wife of Srivas was there, and sometimes Nityananda Prabhu would, even till uh, later in life, drink milk from her breasts, taking her motherly affection. So Nityananda Prabhu always with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it's said that, uh, that he gives his life to anyone in whose eyes he sees a tear for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As Balaram is the best servitor of Krishna, so Nityananda Prabhu of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the other self of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, those places that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could not go and preach without violating the etiquette of a sannyasi, he empowered, commissioned Nityananda Prabhu to, to go. Therefore, Nityananda Avadut, who is a very high person, but sometimes acts like a low person. Because in preaching, then, you have to mingle with people and you have to speak their language. Mahaprabhu followed a certain etiquette of sannyas at the time to protect his preaching, but his preaching had to extend beyond those boundaries. And Nityananda Prabhu was the medium through which he made that extension. All the downtrodden people, people of the bad habits, and and so forth. So, Nitaya Pranadhan. In a simple way, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is describing these principal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Advaita Prabhu Jita Gaur. Advaita Prabhu Jita. So, Advaita Prabhu is just that. He's Prabhu. He's the Lord. He's the Master. Mahavishnu. Sadashiva. But in the whole of Gaur Leela, it is mentioned, Ekali Ishar Krishna Arsa Britya. That Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, Ishwar, and everyone else is a servant. And in Gaur-lila, the idea is that Krishna comes in such a way that even the other Ishwars, Brahm, Shiva, Vishnu, all the gods, goddesses, even other incarnations of the Lord himself can come and take a position of servitude. So Advaita Prabhu was, didn't want to be cheated out of this opportunity. Although he was elderly, and thereby worshipable by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's the guru of his mother, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother, and many other of the uh, principal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as well. Gave sannyas to his to the elder brother. So this is, a, is the picture of a worshipable person for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But this is the last thing that Advaita wanted to have happen that Mahaprabhu would see him as a worshipable personality and he would be cheated out of the opportunity that Gaur Leela is affording everyone, even the gods and goddesses and other incarnations, as he is, the incarnation of the Lord, Sadashiva Mahavishnu. He wanted to establish that he was subordinate to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a servitor of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is said that Advaita had several sons and some of them deviated from his teaching and others did not. And those that deviated were those who insisted that Vishnu, our father is Vishnu, is superior to this Nimai Pandit, Satyanandan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This deviation Advaita could not tolerate. 
they were rejected. Outwardly, Mahaprabhu showed that, that Advaita was worshipable by him, but Advaita could not tolerate. So he went to great extremes to establish that Mahaprabhu was the Prabhu. So Advaita Prabhu Jitagar. Such extremes he went to that uh, even he preached the virtues of Gyan over Bhakti from Bhagavad Gita. We mentioned in our introduction to Bhagavad Gita how Bhagavad Gita itself has not gotten that much attention from the Gaudiya lineage. It wasn't until the time of Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur that we find a commentary on Bhagavad Gita, although Jiva Goswami and other Goswamis in their writings have quoted the Gita, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, very selectively. But we find from Chaitanya Bhagavad Chaitanya Charitamrita that Advaita Prabhu was preaching bhakti from Bhagavad Gita very strongly. And even one occasion he had some difficulty in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where the Purusha and Prakriti are described, the field, also, uh, Chaitra, Chaitra Gya, field and over the field, all these things. Difficulty drawing a bhakti understanding from one verse. Everywhere are his eyes and hands and and so forth. Mahabrabhu came and gave him a special understanding of that verse, how he could preach bhakti from it. So he was well versed in preaching bhakti from Bhagavad Gita, but on one occasion he established a sangha and began to preach the virtues of jnana over bhakti. And of course the news was brought to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he came there and what did he do? Beat on Advaita. Much to the point that uh, Sita Thakurani had to pull him off and say, he's, he's an old man, <laughs> leave him alone. And Advaita, of course, took great joy from this and he felt, felt his life was successful having been beaten by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because now it would be established forever in the historical record that Mahaprabhu was the worshipable Lord of himself. This is a very, of course, vital point of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Krishna's to Bhagavan Sayam. In Ramanuja Sampradaya, they say, you're making so much of one line. One line from a book of 18, almost 18,000 verses. Srimad Bhagavatam. And from Krishna's to Bhagavan Sayam, you want to make so much. And our reply is, yes, we, we want to make so much of that. And Jiva Goswami in his Krishna Sandarbha has made a whole Sandarbha about that one verse, showing how that one line, I should say, of that one verse is the Paribas Sutra, the key sutra to unlocking the whole treasure of Srimad Bhagavatam. That Krishna is Bhagavan Swayam, and for he is the Lord even of Narayana, the source of Narayan, Vishnu, Advaita. And Krishna Sandarbha Jiva Goswami has taken and explained this one line, and then he has gone through and shown so many other statements in Bhagavatam that give support to that. And then he's taken every statement in Srimad Bhagavatam that seems to say something different from that, and given a proper way to understand all of those, such that they lend support indirectly to this statement. So yes, we make much of that one line. Our whole Sambhadaya's tattva is based on that, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Of course, now when we differentiate between these great personalities who are the Lord himself, we should do so with some, some caution for the sake of understanding things properly. But in the course of understanding things properly, we have to be sure that we maintain a high regard for the Lord in any of his manifestations. Advaita is Krishna. Narayan is Krishna. If Rupa Goswami is explained in Tattva, they are one. But when we look at it from another angle, from the angle view of Rasavichar, then we find something more in Krishna. And on that basis we say that he's more. So when we want to say that he's more, we cannot ignore the equality of the Tattva, the their Vishnu Tattva, their God. Otherwise, we make offense to Advaita, and everything goes down. There was some discussion that went around recently on the Internet about the capacity of Advaita Prabhu to give Braj Bhakti. It was said, oh, he has no capacity. He cannot give Braj Bhakti Advaita. And then some people were asking me questions, and it became apparent to me that sometimes statements like this are made. And, of course, Prabhupada used to caution us about it, and Sridhar Maharaj very much so as well, 
But sometimes statements like this are made, and while they may have some truth to them, they're made in such a way that persons without proper understanding make too much out of them and end up then vilifying great persons like Advaita, which if we do, we never have any chance of attaining Braj Bhakti or any kind of Bhakti. So he's greatly worshipable by us, and the fact of the matter is he can give Braj Bhakti. He can't in the sense that he requires that in order for that to be distributed, Krishna himself must come. So as a Dvaita, as a lord of Vaikuntha, Vishnu, then he's not giving the Braj Bhakti. But he calls Mahaprabhu, he had the capacity to, to bring Krishna as Mahaprabhu here. Then Mahaprabhu is set up shop, has set up shop to give out the Braj Bhakti. And who will he do it through? Karadhar, Nityananda, Advaita, Sadgurzai, you know, all these principal associates of himself. So as a Dvaita, as a Bhakta, follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has great power to give Braj Bhakti. In fact, it's, it's mentioned in the Advaita Paribar that he taught his two uh, wives in the sadhana of, of a manjari, just like Purnamasi taught Brinda and Bira Gopi in Brindaban in this mood. And there's some connection between Purnamasi and Advaita. Purnamasi means yoga maya, who directing the, who's directing the affairs of the Leela. In Kavikarnapur's book, Korogarandesh Deepik, it is mentioned that Sita Thakurani, the wife of Advaita, is Yogamaya in Gorlila. But we say Sita Advaita. These two are one and, and different. So it may also be extrapolated from that Advaita Prabhu has some capacity to act as Yogamaya in Gorlila. In fact, he brought Mahaprabhu, set up the stage, and then he called the curtain also for Mahaprabhu. In other words, by his worship of Shalagram with Tulsi and Ganga, Ganga Jal and a loud cry, he called for Mahaprabhu to descend and he came. And then at a certain point in the Leela, he sent a note to Mahaprabhu saying that uh, you no longer, the essence of which was, there's no longer any need for your work, everything's been done. Of course, the Dvaita is related in this regard more to the outward expression of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Yuga Avatar. The inward desires of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of Krishna as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to experience the mood of Radha and so forth, that is different than the reason for which Advaita called Mahaprabhu. But the two should not be bifurcated. We have to look at it in an organic way. Yes, the Yuga Avatar is one thing, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Radha and Krishna combined, is another. But that Radha and Krishna combined, it came at the time for the Kali Yuga Avatar to come, and thus took the place of the Kali Yuga Avatar, does all of the work of the Kali Yuga Avatar as well. And if we are to enter into a deeper understanding of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's inner life, whether past or the outer work of the Yuga Avatar, so we should become acquainted with that. We cannot jump over that. So Advaita has something to do with orchestrating the Leela of the Lord and the dissemination of this Raj Bhakti. Yes, Advaita calls the Yuga Avatar. In other words, the Yuga Avatar comes through Mahavishnu. Yuga Avatar is incarnation of Mahavishnu. But he saw Advaita. The times were such that a special concession was required. He actually called Krishna in the place of the Yuga Avatar. And that coincided with the Krishna's esoteric in, in introspective mood in search of the nature of love and uh, its furthest reach that he envisioned, that he saw personified in, in Radha and Gopis. So Advaita is all connected with all of these things. We cannot separate him out and deprecate him and as a partial incarnation of Yoga Maya, he has some representation in the Brajalila. In this way, all these things should be understood so we can have proper regard for him. And statements like that, the way they cannot give Braj Bhakti, we may have some kernel of truth in them. 
will not be misunderstood. So Advaita Prabhujita Gaura. Gauranga Mahaprabhu Gaura is the worshipable uh, Lord of Advaita. Nimai Vishwambar. Following the ex- explanation of Advaitas, then comes the name Nimai. So Nimai is the name given by Sita Thakurani, the wife of consort of Advaita, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's a kind of a bad name. Nimai. Nimai refers to the neem tree, which is bitter. But it was thought in those days that to give a name like that, it would conjure up thoughts of the bitter neem tree, would then keep away evil spirits. So sometimes bad names were given to good boys to keep bad influences away because bad people, they go after good people. And of course the neem tree is bitter, and but it's antiseptic at the same time and purifying. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sweet, sweet, but in order to taste the sweetness in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching, we have to swallow the bitter neem pill of in the language of Sridhar Maharaj, die to live. We cannot go around that. Even that, Sridhar Maharaj used to say, die to live. It's very sweet, charming, poetic to the ear, but a very bitter pill to swallow. So the name Nima is also sweet in a sense when we think about it, but we should know that to really understand Nima Pandit, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we have to take some bitter medicine as well. Nima Vishwambar. So Vishwambar means the maintainer of the universe. How does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu maintain the universe? That is the position of Vishnu. They were differentiating Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from Vishnu. At the same time, we were saying, of course, he's one in tattva. So in that sense, yes, he's also the maintainer of the universe. In his long, long explanation of how Krishna is superior, or the source, I should say, of, of Narayan, and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that same Krishna, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami and Chaitanya Charitamrita ultimately concludes that at the same time, after he's given his whole argument, it's not improper to say that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, but it's not very flattering. So we can say he's the nourisher, the Vishwambar means maintainer of the universe, the Vishwa, the universe, so he's the maintainer of the universe. He's non different from Vishnu, but in another sense, he's maintaining the universe by the kind of bhakti that he's giving. He's maintaining and nourishing. Nimai Vishwambar and Srinivas Ishwar. So he's the Lord of Srinivas, who represents uh, the, the ideal Bhakta Tattva, like Narada, who had a worshipable view of Krishna as his Ishwar, his Lord. So she's a Shivas is overtly, in Gaurila has that similar type of disposition. Shrinivas Ishwar Bhakta Samuha Chitta Chora. And he's the Chitta Chora. Of all the Bhaktas, the group of devotees, he steals away their, their minds by his qualities. Nadia Shashadar Mayapur Ishwar Nama Pavartana Sura. So he's the moon of Nadia, Navadvip, and Mayapur Ishwar. He's the actual deity of Mayapur. Nama Pavartana Sura. Nama Pavartana means the dissemination of the holy name. So this was one of his main main aspects of his mission, to inaugurate the Dharma of the holy name. Nam Dharma. It is considered throughout the world, in all the religious traditions, that the name of God has some sacredness inherent within it. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took this universal principle. From a religious point of view, it's a universal principle. And more or less, he said, everyone agrees on this. Here is something everyone agrees on. People argue that religions argue too much, and therefore we shouldn't be concerned with being religious, because so many religious people fighting over their doctrines have caused so many wars and so much violence. Therefore, we shouldn't be religious. But Mahaprabhu found a principle, a universal principle that was uh, honored in every religious tradition. And he said, let us make then a religion out of this. So Nam Dharma, 
a whole religion about chanting the holy name. He inaugurated this. And therefore, although we do say, and he himself said it, that there are many names of God, and you could chant any one of them, and they're invested with the, with the shakti of the Lord, power of, of the Lord himself. At the same time, if we accept this universal principle, and we then pursue it, it's reasonable to see what the founder of this Nam Dharma, what names of God in particular he was interested in, he chanted. So while it's true in the general sense that all the names of God are spiritual and so forth, some are have greater power than others. So Krishna Nam, he stressed, and you can see it's practical. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching has the power to unite all peoples in all religions. This is a good example of it. Nam Dharma and, and even and, and and Krishna Nam, the Krishna conception of of Godhead, all of us are included within that. Then Grihijana Shikshaka, Nyashikula Nayaka. So he was a Grihijana Shikshaka. He was a perfect teacher of householder life. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has said, Grihe Thako, Bane Thako, Sadahari Bole Thako. So it doesn't matter whether you're a householder or you're a sannyasi. It doesn't matter. He said, Sadahari Bole Thako. Always chant the holy name of Krishna. You don't have to change your position. You can stay in your position, but add this. So we have to remember the second part of that little line of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song and not just voice the first one. It doesn't matter if I'm sannyasi or grihasta when the sannyasi is preaching, but renunciation doesn't matter. But what matters is sadahari bole dako. Always chant the holy name. Then it doesn't matter. So Mahabhava was a perfect teacher for the householders. He set a very good example as a householder, providing for his family and engaging in Krishna Bhakti, a very wholesome relationship with his wife. We shouldn't misconstrue Garadhar Madana, which we discussed earlier, that uh, Mahabhava was the cupid of Garadhar, to think that there's some room here for the concocted bhava of Gor Nagar. Nagar actually means, in a sense, like uh, like a prostitute. So there's a group of persons who consider that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. So Krishna is Rasaraj, and therefore, as Rasaraj Krishna, Mahaprabhu, Rasaraj Gor, he can taste all mellows. And as the Parakya Bhav is most relishable to Krishna, Gor is Krishna, so we can have Parakya Bhav with. Goranga Mahaprabhu, and this is the secret inner idea of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. But this is not acceptable. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, it is mentioned that although it is true that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, fully, not partially, fully Krishna, and therefore, theoretically, he can taste any mellow and can be worshipped in any number of ways. Proper worship takes into consideration the mood of the Lord at any given time. So although he's Christian, he's in a particular mood in the time of his descent for a particular purpose and so forth, and that should be honored. If we don't honor that in the name of worshipping him, then we commit an offense. He says this, Vrindavan Das Thakur, in the context of debunking this Gornagar Bhav. Nowadays, people have tried to say, well, he only said that externally, but actually, we don't accept that. Mahaprabhu was a perfect sannyasi, as it's mentioned here. Grihijana Sikshaka Nasi Kula Nayaka. He was the perfect teacher as a Grihasta and the hero of all sannyasis. This would be impossible impo for Mahaprabhu to have had secret rendezvous in his leela as a young man. You could say, well, he did that was going on in Nadi before he took sannyas. But that would have been a blemish on his character as well. <laughs> it's not that just only sannyasis shouldn't have these kind of rendezvous with unmarried ladies in, in that culture, but <laughs> any young man also. So Mahaprabhu was perfect. He puck a marriage to his eternal consorts. He said he didn't even joke with his own wife. So this is a completely concocted idea. Yes, he's a cupid of Gadadhar. 
And there are some devotees like Narhari and Lochandas Thakur and so forth who have written some statements that seem like Gornagar Bhav, but these are only statements in which the devotees are envisioning Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Krishna at that time, that moment, and thinking of him as such internally in terms of their own sentiments, gopi sentiments, gopi bhava, but never externally as a method of worship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was this established anywhere until much, much later than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time by a group of people who were like bards, like minstrels. They used to keep prostitutes and so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy became, theology became very popular and, and so then they tried to license their illicit life and bring it in connection with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching and so forth. This is how this Gornagar Bhava came about, actually, historically. So any statements in the scripture that seem to, by great devotees of Mahaprabhu, that seem to indicate that, we have to adjust them according to the reality of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lila and his mood, what he came to teach and so forth. So he was the perfect Grihasta, set a perfect example for us, and the hero of all the sannyasis. And Sarvabha Moshodana, Gajapati Tarana, Ramananda Poshana Vira. So he Shodana Sarvabhoma. He, he purified Sarvabhoma. We know the Leela, how Mahaprabhu converted him. He was an Advaitin, Adwait, an and a Vedantist, and a great logician. And Mahaprabhu purified him of his cloudy understanding of the sun like sutras of the Vedanta. And Gajapati Tarana. Gajapati means the Lord of the Elephants. So this is the Prataprudra Maharaj, the Raj of Jagannath Puri, who was powerful and maintained a strong army such that the uh, Muslims couldn't in invade into Puri. They were already, at that time, historically, they were in charge of Bengal, but they couldn't penetrate into Orissa because of Gajapati Raj, Maharaj Prataprudra, who so much wanted to be identified as a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's said that when Mahaprabhu left Jagannath Puri for the first time to go to Nadia on his way to Vrindavan, that Prataprudra Maharaj exhausted his entire reserves in his treasury to facilitate Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's travels within his district by way of building bridges for him to cross the river, arranging for boats, and building monuments in the places after he had passed, and, and so forth. But to get acknowledgement, to be acknowledged as a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was difficult for a worldly person like the king. Mahaprabhu's followers were leaving behind the world to follow him. And the king is, is a personification of worldliness, so... Mahaprabhu to protect his image did not allow the people uh, did not allow Gajapati Raj to come close to him for fear that people would think he was bought off by this king and a sannyasi who should be impartial had become partisan due to the su material support of the king but of course the purified Sarvabhoma he negotiated in such a way and coached but the Purudra Maharaj, that he could get that acknowledgement from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Rathyatra. When Mahaprabhu fell in the trance and the king came in ordinary dress as a Vaishnava and began to sing Gopi Gita from Srimad Bhagavatam's Ras Pancha Jai. And came to the verse, Tavukatamrita tapta jivanam kavibiriditam kalma shapaham shravanamangalam simaratatam uvigrantiye buridhajana. Mahaprabhu embraced him. And go on, he said, say more, speak more. And he showed Gajapati, Prataprudra Maharaj, the vision of his capacity to be in all the groups, the Kirtan groups at Rathiyatra, like Krishna expanded himself to be with each gopi. So Mahaprabhu delivered him in Ramananda portion of Vira. And like a great hero, Mira, he nourished Ramananda Roy. He nourished him with such sweet insights and made them come out of Ramananda Roy and Ramananda Sambhad. Ramananda Sambhad is a conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy. 
And that is the climax of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Everything is, everything after that is anti-climatic, or it reflects back on that. In that place, the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita is about the fact that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna combined. And there it was shown. It was revealed practically to Ramananda Roy. So, so much is contained in that Ramananda Sambhad. It's such a high point in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Ramananda gave it. Mahaprabhu considered that Ramananda Roy was his Ragmarg Guru. If we have that degree of interest in Krishna consciousness, that we're qualified to tread that path, then how does it manifest? That we're prepared to take it and able to take it, capable of drawing it from anywhere and everywhere. This is the Sadagrahi Vaishnav. This is not some artificial adjustment that we make in our mind. But to actually have eligibility for that is a kind of greed and eagerness, like we see in Raghunathas Goswami, who material handcuffs, his father said, would be of no use. Charmed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, heart stolen by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nothing could keep him back. His family shackled him practically with the, the ball and chain of material life in the form of servants and cook and beautiful wife and all facility and so forth. When he went and the wife said, bring him back, handcuff him. The husband said wisely, what will, what will some handcuffs do? We've given him all these things. This is what's shackling everybody. He doesn't care for that. So we have real eagerness, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed such eagerness that he could draw it out of Ramananda Roy, an unlikely person from the external point of view. He was from Sudravarna, a um, Kayasta. Mahaprabhu was from a high-class Brahmin family and a sannyasi. And this Kayasta, Ramananda was, a, was involved in government affairs and so forth. So it was shocking to the people to see how Mahaprabhu embraced Ramananda and, and how they exchanged with one another. And Mahaprabhu said, Kiba bi pro kiba nashi shudrakeni no ye krishna tatuve to say guru hai. It means, in one sense, who has the kind of eagerness that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had, and he will get Krishna from anywhere and everywhere. And what we find today so much is people claiming to have eagerness for Raghunuga Bhakti and just saying, there's no Krishna here, there's no Krishna there, there's no Krishna in him, there's no Krishna in him. You understand the difference? <laughs> <laughs> He's not bona fide. He hasn't got, he hasn't got, he hasn't got. Only we've got here. <laughs> but if you really have eligibility for that, then you're finding it everywhere. And to whatever extent it's not there, then that's just pushed aside. That's just pushed aside. Taking the valuable wealth, wherever it can be found. It's an inner eligibility that enables us to look at the world in a particular way. Atmavat manyate jagat, Bhagavad says. One sees others like himself. Gopis projected that the trees bending were more advanced than themselves. The earth was more advanced than themselves. Krishna's footprints were always on the earth, but he didn't stay with them. The trees were bowed in reverence, but they had shown something that caused him to leave, some pride that caused him to leave. They were the great devotees, but they were projecting such that everyone else, everything, even inanimate things, were greater devotees than themselves. So if we want to enter into that plane, Mahaprabhu has showed the way in this verse. Kiba vi prakiba nashi shudukene nai ye krishna tatuve to say gurai. Whoever knows something about Krishna, whoever knows the truth about Krishna, and whoever, it doesn't matter what position he's come from, whether it's a sannyasi or a sudra or a western or Indian, this, white, that, black or white, it doesn't matter. Woman, if that eagerness is there, then whatever extent you have it, Krishna, I, I want that from you. So Mahaprabhu got this from Ramananda, but Ramananda considered what? That you have it, actually. You're the ocean, I'm the cloud. That's all. So the water is coming from the ocean. I'm just pouring it back down again. In the context, this, the sun is, is bringing it out. The farthest reach of Krishna consciousness, what Bhagavad Gita is implying and pointing to, Ramananda Samvad is taking and shedding light on. So, Rai Ramananda considered, yeah, I'm just the instrument and you're playing. So actually, Mahab Rai Ramananda considered Mahaprabhu is nourishing me. 
Mahaprabhu considered he was getting nourishment from Ramananda Roy. And we were all being nourished <laughs> from this. So Ramananda portion of Vira, Rupananda Vardhana. So the Ananda of Rupa was increased by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Palana. And he was the guardian of Sanatana. So Rupa Goswami, he is giving the the ocean of bhakti. He's churning the ocean of bhakti for us. And Sanatana Goswami is bringing us to the feet of Rupa Goswami. Sanatana Goswami is showing us the transition between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raghunuga Bhakti in his writing. It's not that he's not a Raghunuga Bhakta, Ragatmika Bhakta. But there's a transition we have to pass through. So that Vaidhi is protecting. That Vaidhi, even if we have eligibility for Rag, Vaidhi Bhakti should stay in place. It will protect our budding enthusiasm and greed for raga. So they have been mentioned in this way. Rupa, Rupa, Rupananda Vardhana Sanatana Palana. It refers to some extent to how they were empowered to teach and write. And Haridas Modana Dira. And the sober Haridas Thakur Mahaprabhu gives delight to. So Haridas Modana Dira. Dira means peaceful, sober. So Thakur Haridas was a very sober devotee. And he did not partake of much intimacy in the way of his dealings with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but with some regard at a distance, being obeisance and so forth. Overtly in a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Lila, then Haridas Thakur is often said to represent the, the Shantarasa. But recently I also heard talk of, of this in such a way that Haridas Thakur was deprecated. It's almost unmentionable, but just to make a point, a fellow had said that Haridas Thakur, in passing from the world, requested that he would leave the world before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he couldn't bear the separation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But in doing so, then, he wasn't considerate of Mahaprabhu's separation, what he would feel left behind. And there's some truth to that. But then this fellow said, therefore the bottom line is that uh, we're not interested in Haridas Thakur. And it may be true that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced with Haridas Thakur in his arms at the time of his passing, but he said Putana was also in the arms of Krishna. And the bottom line is he didn't do what Mahaprabhu wanted. So this is a, a guy who said it's, it's Hare Krishna. <laughs> to mention such things is uh, polluting, but for the sake of glorifying Haridas Thakur, we, we have to comment on it. As I was shocked. Somebody sent me a message like that, that, that this person had said. I, uh, Brahma sent it to me. I said, you, you should immediately say something and purify the atmosphere. That, that's a horrible thing. What kind of understanding is, is this? Haridas Thakur is actually worshipable by all of us because as Puri Goswami Maharaj taught, Thakur Haridas was put as the acharya for Nam Bhajan, for the Pranali, of all the devotees, by Nam Bhajan, we will get our sadhya, our ideal, will be attained by Nam Bhajan. Haridas Thakur was put in charge. He's the charge for the line, the Pranali of Nam Bhajan. So whatever anyone's getting through their Nam Bhajan, we have to pay regard to Thakur Haridas. And further, it's mentioned in Jayavadharma, of course, that the bhajan pranali, the line of bhajan, in order to attain the highest ideal of Madhurya, then it has to come from a Madhurya person. This is the way Puri Marsh reasoned about Thakur Haridas. And of course in Brahma Samhita it's mentioned that Chatumuk Brahma was um, involved in the cultivation of the Manjari Swarup, Manjari Bhav of, of Braj and that further it's mentioned in the literature that uh, Thakur Haridas was incarnation of Brahma in Gaur Lila. So there's other ways to look at it. 
Prahlad, of course, is the example of Shantarasa, and Prahlad is also said to be partially represented in Haridas Thakur. So we shouldn't just look at the surface and then deprecate Haridas Thakur in the name of the higher thing. He has some connection with all of that. And if we are to, we have to have some favorable connection with Thakur Haridas. We should pray to Thakur Haridas that our chanting would become pure. Because as Puri Goswami Maharaj used to say with a chuckle, <laughs> and unless your chanting is offenseless, there's no question of Raja Bhakti, no matter what else you want, want to do. You can't think your way there. So, Braja Rasa Bhavana, Dushta Mata Shatana, Kapati Bighat Thana Kama. So, Mahabharu, he's absorbed in the Braja Rasa. So, Braja Rasa Bhavana, Dushta Mata Shatana, Kapati Bighat Thana Kama. So nicely, the way, so nice the way these words are placed. He says that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was absorbed in a rasa of, of Braj and Dustamata Shatana. And he removes the filthy thoughts of the mind, destroying lust and greed. So these go together, is the idea. To be absorbed in the rasa of Braj, then we'll have to destroy all of these filthy thoughts of the mind, all the lusts and the greed. We cannot skirt around that and go in there with our shoes on. No. And Shura Bhakta Palana Shushka Gyana Tadana Chula Bhakti Dushana Rama That Gyan that obscures Chala Bhakti Dushana Ram Chala means trick, so hides the the beauty of bhakti and thus he protects and maintains his pure devotees. So this is a strong point in Gaudiya Vaishnavism that uh, jnan has to be put in its proper place. It cannot take precedence over bhakti. Jnane prayasya urapasya namanta eva Mahaprabhu liked this statement of Lord Brahma's when Raman and Leroy uttered it. You know, so many things he rejected. And when when he said this, Mahaprabhu said, yes, now now we're, we're getting somewhere. Put the jnana and the knowing in its proper place. Hatefully rejecting that ascending path, knowing not only its futility in general, in other words, the ascending path without bhakti, cannot get us out of the material world. If the ascending path of a mark is influenced by bhakti, if some bhakti is factored into that, then it can be successful. Not only that, but if we are successful in getting liberation on the mark with the help of bhakti, that doesn't mean we'll ever enter into the eternal relationship with Krishna necessarily. We may not. So... Some cautions to be given. It should be properly understood, though, because knowledge is also important to us. Self-realization is important. And God-realization follows self-realization. The full idea of self-realization, of course, is God-realization, because only when we see ourself in relation to God have we fully understood our, our self. So knowledge has its place, subordinate to bhakti. In one sense, bhakti is the highest knowledge. This is brought out in the Gita, Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam. This is about bhakti, but the word vidya is used, which means knowledge. It means because love has, inside of love, there's a kind of knowing. When you love, you know what to do. No questions. You know how to move without thinking about it. And also, real love requires some knowledge of what's what. Who am I? What is the world? Otherwise, I misconstrue and I'm not loving at all. So real love begins beyond the bodily plane of life. Only unconditional love, which is a popular term, can only be realized on that plane. But knowledge has its place. So, I should say, knowledge has its place. But not, not that it uh, can obscure the beauty of bhakti. If it's, if it's obscuring the beauty of bhakti and relegating bhakti to a lower position, in other words, bhakti as a means to gyan, and this is not Shuddha Bhakti. So Mahaprabhu protects his pure devotees 
from this misconception and thus allows the pure uh, true beauty of Shuddha Bhakti to shine. So this is the song of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. It's every morning here.